In today's tutorial, we're gonna go over the most important and probably least talked about topic when it comes to music production and music mixing, and that's phase. If you're not sure what phase is or if you're in phase, you're probably not in phase. Phase has to do with drums and guitars and really anything that there's two mics micing the same source or same performance. And to show an example, I took the exact same guitar track and one of them is just as is and one of them I applied an EQ curve to it. So let's jump into Photoshop. Photoshop has different layer blends and basically I have it on one where it will cancel out if it's the exact same. So I've copied the same guitar and when I put it on difference right here, you can see it's completely black. It's the exact same where when I take it off, and put the new guitar with an EQ curve on it, look how much we've changed the phase. And you might be thinking, well, I use drum VSTs and like program drums, so I don't have to worry about phase because they're already recorded and captured in phase. But as you can see, as soon as you put an EQ on one of the channels or you start moving things around, you're throwing your phase off. So it's super important to understand this topic. Let's jump right in with examples. For the first example, I just recorded my drum kit. It's basically just two overheads and I'm only capturing a snare to show you what's going on. Got a snare top and a snare bottom mic. So the easiest thing to do is basically just loop the same hit. That way you're getting the exact same performance and you can really tell what's happening. My plugin of choice for moving phase around is the Little Labs IBP. It's a UAD plugin. I only suggest this one because it's what I have and I'm so used to it. Since there's multiple mics and they're all different placements from the snare as well as different distances, we're gonna get a lot of phase issues. So the first thing that I like to do when I'm mixing drums, I always phase align to my overheads. This is something that I would throw on at the end of my chain. So I make sure that I'm in general phase, EQ all of my stuff, get my snare and kick and everything sounding the way I want. And then afterwards I'll throw this plugin on just to make sure that I'm in phase with how I've EQ'd it. And I find it really easy to tell if something's in phase by just throwing it in mono, just in the center. So let's do that. And again, I'm gonna loop the snare. It's gonna get annoying, but it's important. So as you can see, as soon as I flip the phase there, it sounds thin. A good way to tell if you're in phase is if it sounds thin, you're out of phase. If it sounds thick, you're in phase. And if you have the low end information, you're good. But as you'll see, as I start moving sliders around, phase is, it's complicated. This knob on the left is basically just delaying the signal. So like moving it over slightly or a lot. And then this one is basically adjusting the phase. Basically, instead of moving it over, we're taking the signal and flipping it like this, like 90 degrees this way. So you can see at a certain point, it kind of starts to disappear and it sounds disjointed. That's because we're moving the signal too much. They're basically right at the exact same point. So I didn't have to go much with it. Even that alone, it sounds like they're hitting at the exact same time, whereas before it sounds like there's like the slightest bit of spread. If you can hear the low end on the snare getting thicker, that's basically what we're going for. I'm gonna leave the overheads in the center and now let's add the snare top. Do you hear how it instantly got way thicker? That's what we're going for. All of a sudden it just sounds like it's all in the same spot. And all we really did was move the snare drum a little bit. And if you don't have this plugin or if you can't afford one of these, basically your best bet is to zoom in a lot. You can basically see how much of a difference there is. The snare seems to be starting there on the overheads and starting here on the actual snare drum. So you could technically just take the snare drum and move it like this, just to match up with basically where this is going but it just takes so much more time and so much more effort. That's why it's worth for me at least buying this plugin because it's just so much easier. And let's see if we need to adjust the phase as well. That works for me. Again, easiest way, find where it sounds the thinnest, flip it. So this is where we were before doing any of the phase adjustments.
If you can hear how much fatter the snare got and how much more present it got and how much more focused it got, that's basically what we're going for. Focus, thickness, and low end. If the low end disappears, you're probably out of phase, but you'll see with the guitars, it gets a little bit more complicated than that. So let's go to the guitars. And for this example, I've doubled the guitars twice. So I have this main guitar, the exact same DI performance. We have this main guitar with the Audio 1111. We have a double guitar with the foreign, I believe, NTS. Just to get the chug and pick attack and stuff. And then we have the auto audio blown out wall with a foreign nameless. Just for fuzz. So we've got three different options, all blending into this master guitar tone to add up into this. All of them are adding their own nuances to the guitar riff but again, adding our own phase issues to the guitar riff. So let's go through and figure out what we can do with this. The guitars are all in the exact same placement. I didn't move them at all and they're not different mics. It's the exact same performance all at the exact same time. So the only difference really will be between how each amp sim delays our signal, if at all. The reason that I will have this plugin on every single channel, even the ones that I'm not moving, is that very few plugins are true bypass, meaning that if they're bypassed and off, some of them are still adding some sort of signal through. They're adding some sort of color. And I don't know if this one is. I don't know if every plugin is. I don't know which ones are true bypass. I don't have the time to look it up. So I just, for safety, put it on because I want it to be delayed the exact same amount or colored the exact same amount. And then we have our... I'm just going to add that in. And let's go through the exact same process. So even though they're in the exact same spot, sometimes delaying the signal can give you a desired sound. And basically we're gonna go really slow because every little move makes a pretty big difference until we get to a point where you're like, that just sounds fucked. Another thing to keep in mind is that as I'm delaying the signal, we're actually going in and out of phase. So something might sound really weird as I'm moving it, but as soon as I flip the phase, it might be like the tone that we're going for. So another thing to keep in mind is like listening to what we're actually adding. So sometimes you don't necessarily need to go for thickness 100% of the time because sometimes like for this example, I added this guitar because I wanted this. So I do want to make sure that my low end sounds proper, but I also want to make sure that what I'm adding is being prevalent as well. Even by delaying it that slight amount, we get rid of that kind of annoying frequency that's like the cake. So if, I don't know if you can tell, but it sounds really thin at this point. This is what I'm trying to avoid. I personally like this more. I feel like it evens out the balance of what I'm adding, but also gets rid of some of those frequencies that I don't like, and I don't have to EQ it. We go through this whole rabbit hole of EQing. We get the low end right, then we get the mid right, then we get the high right, but then nothing's right at the end because we're really focusing on one thing because we haven't got our source tone right. But by moving the delay and by flipping the phase slightly, we get the desired tone. Now I have the best of both worlds. I have the extra tone that I want from that amp, but I also have a phase coherency that's canceling out the fizz, some of that fizz. And then we just do the same thing to the next guitar. So that already has added so much low end and so much of the low mid information. That's what I want out of this guitar really nasty and fuzzy and basically I'm using it to emphasize like the 400 to 200 Hertz basically
I don't know, depending on what sources you're listening on, hopefully you have some sort, you're not listening on an iPhone, I'd assume. Um, yeah, it's just like, I can hear the low end so much more. Now I'm just gonna throw it in the mix and mute certain tracks and just make sure that we're actually adding and not taking away. Because if you're out of phase, you're taking away from the sound. Cool, so I'm happy with these results overall. Before I wrap this up, I just wanna show you what it's like on drum VSTs. Like I've explained, as soon as I put this plugin on the snare and make those adjustments, the room and the snare and the overheads just glue way more. Sounds way more full, not only the initial hit, but just the sustain. Maybe not way more full, but it sounds more full. And honestly, when you're mixing, every little bit counts. And obviously, you want to have the best phase coherency as possible. So thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed any of this at all, or if you made it to the end, I'm surprised because it's such a boring topic, but it's super important. Thank you so much for watching. Let me know down below if you like this. Leave a comment. Subscribe if you want to see more of this stuff. I'll be making more videos soon. Thank you so much. See you next time. See ya.